Hello and welcome to Universal Heritage Television Manager. We have on our hands, right away, our personality interview program, Face to Face Niger. Our guest is a veteran broadcaster, very well known around and in Nigeria. He is barrister Ihani Ocho. Today he attends, he, he adds one in his life. He is, today is his birthday, in other words. And then um, we decided to celebrate him, you know, having contributed so much during his career. And uh, we decided to have a chat with him, to rub minds with him on some contemporary issues. Barista Ihani Ocho, you are welcome to our program. Thank you very much. Yeah, so can you, uh, I think the introduction should be better done by you. So tell the world who, you, who is Barista Ihani Ocho. They know you more as a broadcaster than a lawyer. So tell us mm. so much about your career, about the skills you possess, because there are so many things people do not know about you. Yeah, uh, first and foremost, um, uh, I have been an auxiliary teacher. Okay. In fact, immediately after my secondary school, because of the type of result I had, uh, I was employed as an auxiliary teacher the school I attended, but I'm also secondary school the Parazu, Nahazu I stayed there for some time. Um, wanted to go to the seminary, or rather, wanted to be a priest. Something happened along the line. I left that area. Went to um, ATTC. Okay. What is ATTC? The, the present day um, Abba Nikoku College of Education. Uh, yes. Advanced Teachers Advanced Teachers, yes. Training it used college. to be a ATTC, Advanced Teachers Training College, okay. where um, in, in the early 70s. After that, um, I was posted to teach at Gas Secondary School, Ebu, where I stayed uh, for about three years and then became interested in what I was hearing on radio, what jobs people had done on radio, or what they were doing. Particularly, the work of um, somebody I called my mentor, okay. even though he was my junior when I went to broadcasting. His name is Namdi Olebra. It was his work that um, attracted me to broadcasting. And so, I went into broadcasting, worked with him, tried to see whether I could beat him on the job. But, you know, he, he is a figure that uh, you cannot beat. So, I, I, I veered into the special aspect of broadcasting drama. Okay. I started writing scripts for the drama department, in addition to presenting programs. So I became a producer and a presenter. And um, along the line, got trained locally uh, in the here. In, in 1980, uh, thereabout, I went to Lagos, Federal Religious Corporation of Nigeria, FRC and Training School, where I stayed for some time and learned the, the job to help my station. Um, in 1983, also, I went to BBC London for another training and then um, came back and started working for my station, IBC, then, for my, then IBS. Yeah. It used to be IBS, Human Broadcasting Service, later. In fact, it was when I was in London that they changed the name to IBC, Human Broadcasting Corporation. So I left the place as um, IBS, okay. went to London. By the time I came, I came back, it was IBC. IBC. Yeah. So we came and started doing the job. While doing the job also, we, we had interest in so many other things. Like what? Uh, um, law. Okay. I started to get um, into law, not because I didn't like my profession of broadcasting, but I wanted something I could lean on after I had left uh, the main job of broadcasting. And I got called to buy the early 20. Uh, 
And since then, a lot before I left the broadcasting organization on retirement, I had already become a lawyer for so many years. And it wasn't difficult for me when I left to move into legal practice. Okay. And then from legal practice, I continued writing my books. I am an author also. Okay. I have books to my credit. What, what kind of books? Um, <coughs> because we, we know they said that you are, you are a poet. You yes. write drama. I, I am a playwright. Okay. I am a poet. I am a, um, a humor monger. <laughs> yes. I'm a humor monger. I like um, humor. In fact, the first book I wrote, which is um, Your Happy Moments, is simply a compendium of humor, witticism, epigrams, and all, all those things. Um, even the, sec the second one wasn't as broad as um, like the first one, but the third one that is on now, on, which is going to come up very soon, which I titled uh, Joy Without End. It's still the same humor. Okay. And then, plus some aspects of uh, current affairs. Okay. I like to be part of what is happening around me. And so, these are the things I, plus maybe some other things uh, that, that human beings do, which I also involve myself in. Okay. Before um, this time, I, I have my, uh, as my hobby, or hobbies, uh, tennis. I played tennis very, very well when I, when I had all this energy and strength, when I was very agile. Yeah. I'm also a chorister. In fact, I, I'm a pioneer uh, member, uh, founding chairman of the Holy Cross Choir, Aladimma. Mm -hmm. The Holy Cross Catholic uh, Parish Choir, Aladimma, uh, where I'm also uh, a pillar, according to the, the, the title given to us, the awards. Okay, sir. So, so when did you leave uh, employment as a broadcaster? Twenty um, on my uh, birthday, twenty ten. On my birthday anniversary, to twenty ten, about thirteen years ago. That was when I left broadcasting. You, you left. Uh, you retired from broadcasting. From broadcasting and moved into law practice. I moved into law practice. In fact, I got myself attached to. Somebody who, who encouraged me when, when I was uh, reading law, one barrister, Uzo um, Monike. Okay. He stays at um, MCC Road mm -hmm. uh, over here. He was my mentor in a way. So I got into the chambers and we were there doing it until when I could no longer be with him because of, um, like somebody who said, because of circumstances <laughs> beyond control post. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so. Okay. Okay. So, uh, uh, while it lasted, what was the experience like in broadcasting? Oh, a very, very beautiful experience. In fact, see, broadcasting is um, a very glamorous profession, just like law, law is uh, gl glamorous. But uh, in, when we when we started, mm. we were everywhere. Okay. We did everything. Okay. We knew what broadcasting was all about. We could go anywhere. The whole of East, East Central States in those days. The whole of former Imo State, we went round, we knew everybody, everybody knew us. Not these days when you have um, a station made up of 10 people and uh, or 30 people who only circulate within a radius of two kilometers. No. In broadcasting, we enjoyed it. Anywhere you went and mentioned your name, hey, say, is it you, is it you? People gave you gifts, people visited you, people did a lot of things for you because of what you said on radio, what you did on radio, the programs you produced and things like that, or the things you wrote. So it was a very beautiful, um, oh, sorry, it is still a very glamorous uh, profession. If only you can do what you ought to do in it. Okay. If only you can do what you need to do in it. So yes. what do you exactly do you mean by that? that by, by drawing from that, can you relate broadcasting then and now? Yeah, broadcasting then involved research. You could go anywhere, look for materials, come back, um, write your script, Edit your script, record your script, present your script, then pres I mean, uh, put it out. It is quite a lot of work. Well, these days, what do you do? What do you have? Hello, what's your name and uh, where are you calling from? That's all the content. 
nobody has time to go and sit down and write scripts. Because, okay, in our days, we had such aspects of radio like um, features, documentary, drama, talks, uh, magazine, uh, everything. I don't know whether we have such things these days. I don't know whether we have. No, no features, no doc you, can't, you can't differentiate between features now and magazines or, or documentaries or talks or music programs or whatever. But in our days, you could say this is a music program, you could say this is a drama program, you could say this is a talks, this is a features, documentary, all of that. Sir, sir, are you trying to imply that the quality of broadcasting has gone down? Um, <laughs> you are telling me that, yes, it has gone down. Reason? Well, I, I, I'm not going to blame those um, the broadcasters of this because I think they are handicapped somehow. Handicapped in what respect? Uh, sometimes um, <laughs> they, lack, they, they, they don't have the training. They're not being trained. That's number one. But sometimes they don't have the facilities to do to go out and do the uh, research. Okay. It, though in our time. Um, we had vehicles that would take us to places where we would do like, contacts and work. Though they have an advantage over us, us anyway, because of the technology we are having. We, we didn't have them. Uh, which we didn't have. You could stay here and make contacts and somebody gets you something for, for, for the air. But how many of them are really serious with the thing? Somebody just coming from nowhere, gets into the studio and starts talking. And of course, they veer out of their, their, their line because they, they don't have depth. There's no, there's no depth in whatever they are talking. Only, hey, what is, what is your take? Whatever, that, whatever is the take of that person listening, it becomes the, the content for the day. So you cannot say, this, this program now, we are going to have this. So some of the listener will now get ready to listen to that particular thing. But no, it's not there. No, I will not say that for, of, of all the broadcasting sessions anywhere. There are some producers or presenters who still try to give us what uh, the whole thing should be, telling us by this time we, we need to do this, we get, give you this, we give you that. But majority of the people you hear on air are simply there to say, hello, what's your name, where are you calling from? What is your take? Okay, okay, during your days, there were some particular programs that uh, popularized you. That uh, ah. I know something like a laugh a little, yeah, La Laugh a Little was my humor program on television. Okay. In a lighter mood was my humor program on, um, uh, on, radio. on radio. Okay. Then I was also reading news, presenting music programs, presenting cultural programs. Uh, in fact, everything, every aspect of radio. Okay. I was doing those things, but um, Laugh a Little uh, in a lighter mood. Um, well, drama production. Script, the scripts I was writing for my department, I even other departments. I was a script writer for the station for so many years. Okay. Producer, director, presenter. Okay, okay. Uh, something funny played out when you announced, you announced your birthday, the usual way you play phone. Yes. Um, on the social media, we read you when you said, people were surprised that uh, rather than talking about your birthday, you focused on praying for P2B. And, uh, yeah. Okay. So, so what what is your motivation? You know, I, um, you know, I'm not a politician, but there is uh, there was a or there is a movement mm -hmm. towards a better Nigeria mm -hmm. being headed by Peter Obi. Okay. And many of us, I'm sure you are included. All of us have. I mean, we looking at um, Peter Obi as somebody who can give us what Nigeria wants. Right, yeah. And so, what so many things have happened. So much what has gone under the bridge that. Uh, we, we seem to have left the tracks yeah. and followed whatever, is it money or whatever thing that uh, led us not to bring him in the way he ought to be brought in. So it is something that the forces against him are so much that it's only God that can help him uh, uh, reclaim his mandate. Okay. And so I said, since many of us don't have the money to give him to do something, since many of us cannot go out there to speak for him and so we can pray. And so if, if we uh, pray for him from our hearts, God may listen to us and they, like we say, the, the heart of prayer is prayer from the heart. Okay. So if we pray from our hearts for Peter B, God might say, well, because you people have prayed from your heart, let me see now, make him claim his uh, mandate. So that's why I said, instead of me 
drinking, eating, making merry, having fun on my birthday today. Let all my friends join me and then yes. pray for people this other time. The, uh, the, our common good, our common goal, our common cause, which is pursuing my come to fruition. Which is the interest of all of us. The interest of all of us who, who want good governance, who want good government, who want good life for all Nigerians. Okay, sir. Um, so, would you mind sharing with the public, you know, letting us know how old you are today? You know, you know, Africans, Nigerians. Mm. Yeah, okay. They tell you the art is plus one. So, my, are you uh, also uh, adding plus one? Uh, yeah, yes. <laughs> my my little boy uh, in those days was asked during my uh, laugh at little thing. Uh, boy, how old are you? how old are you? I said, Daddy, I'm not old. <laughs> 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 I'm not sure I'm old. Neither am I plus one. I, I am. <laughs> see, many people say I'm plus one. Instead of telling us how old. Uh, yes, uh, I've clocked seventy-three. Seventy-three. Yes, yeah. I've clocked seventy-three. By, by, the, by the, 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 the way I was told, yeah. I wasn't there when I was born. Remember? Yeah. So <laughs> I wasn't there when I was born, but I was told that I was born on the, like I put it there, yeah. um, the last. Uh, okay, the last day of the second week mm. of the uh, second quarter um, or first quarter of the uh, last uh, century of the last millennium. <laughs> 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 so yeah, I'm 73 yeah. by my records. If there are other ones that my parents did not tell me, I don't know. So my records show that I'm 73 today. Yes. Okay, so what is life like? Well, uh, can we say actually that? You are enjoying life for retirement because you left, uh, you retired from a, um, a vocation and then you now got into another thing. So, if, if I ask you what is life like in retirement, how do you respond to that? I'm asking that question now. What is life not like in retirement? A beautiful, a beautiful, a beautiful situation. Um, somebody like also asked me sometime, uh, uh, what, what have you learned from life? I said I have learned geometry, arithmetic, English, <laughs> uh, algebra, and uh, so many things. I learned so many things from right. life. But I know if you retire well, okay. there's nothing like uh, there's nothing as good as retirement. You, you no longer will be um, hushed or rushed mm -hmm. from your house early in the morning, looking at time when you to go out, when to come in. And if you have, if you're lucky to have grandchildren, mm -hmm. hey, retirement is the best of times. You no longer watch your normal pro programs. You watch the children's program now, and you see yourself going, becoming younger and younger in, yeah. in, in, in heart and so on and so forth. So, if you retire and you are given your uh, uh, whatever you desire, you deserve yes. from government, your gratuity and your pension, there's nothing better than retirement. In fact, I'm concerned because at my age now, at my retirement, I'm not going to look for another wife. I'm not looking for Another employment. I'm not building another house. I'm not, I'm not, what else am I looking for? If not to say, hey, to remain in my house, keep myself happy, keep my family happy, enjoy my grandchildren, and then give thanks to my God. That's all. Okay. Can we I'm, I mustn't be there until I'm, I'm pushed out. Then I get up and okay, so they don't want to go. No, 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 no. I retired when I should, and I've been enjoying my life. Apart from the little, little ups and downs of life, which everybody has, uh, some of these things we have, uh, uh, some of the challenges, health challenges, which many of us do have at a lot of age. But retirement is a good time. If only government will realize that those who retire should have their gratuities. Mm -hmm. It's 13 years now since I retired, and yet no problem as for gratuity. You will not get paid gratuity. Nothing like that. If even those who retired before me, they haven't got anything. Yes, but not only me, more, almost uh, many, many more lights have not done that. So, so, yeah. It's okay. Um, today, by virtue of uh, um, your retirement, your contribution to the society, you qualify to answer an elder in the state. And um, so many things have been going wrong in the state. According to, if you feel the pulse of the people, people report of poor governance. And uh, typically, most society, one would expect that when something is going on, the elders will come out and shout. But in Imo state, in, a, in Imo, 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 Imo land, in Imo land, 
if the people who are running government are younger ones, and the elders are there, and so many things are going on, and they're not talking. When I talk about traditional rulers, you don't hear them. They will have a group, they call themselves, Mm. Uh, catching up emo elders and all of that. The, so the, the what, problem, what, do you, what, do you, what do you have to say? The problem they have is hunger. Hunger, because they are hungry. Whosoever gives them one night a day, they talk nonsense. <laughs> Otherwise, the elders should be able to stand their feet and say, this is wrong. Governor, governor or president, what you are doing is wrong, and don't, don't do it. But if, they know that if they say it, mm. they, will be, they will be deprived of their allowances, and so they, 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 they keep quiet. That's good. The, the, the elders have a lot of um, part to play in making sure that our country is properly run. Yeah. But the majority of them out of hunger, rattle, rattle here and there because they don't want to miss their daily bread. Many of them look away, look the other way, so that the government will. And fear, insecurity. Some people who will say something that they know should help the society. But what they say should help the society might even offend one or two people yeah. who, who are reckless, who are not prepared to uh, save life. Some will say, okay, let, okay, you could, I'll deal with you. And you don't know how they will deal with the person who has just said what they should, they should say. So many, many people are afraid to say they, 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 they tell the truth because of their life, fear of their lives. Okay, so, so how will you assess government performance? Government before and government now. And especially what we... Which government now? The, the type of government we have. Uh, state, or, state or federal? Both of them. I wish, I wish we had governments. That's what I, where, that's where I stop. I wish we had... In other words, you are saying we, you are saying we don't have a government. How can you have... Okay, did you see the road you came into? My road here? Yeah. Yes, I, uh -huh. I, I saw. You've been lamenting over this road in the social media. Recognize, recognize the streets where I live, yeah. with the streets, and so forth. Promise, promise. It didn't start with this, this um, particular, uh, government. Uh, particular government. Anyway. 20, since 2011, this road has been like this. And then, um, and you said government, government. So, I don't know. Government is not government. Uh, the, the democracy we thought we were going to have. It's no longer democracy, even at the federal and the democracy now is a government of the people, for the people, by the people, against the people. That is what it is now. Okay. That's where you have redefined democracy. That, not redefining, that's how, exactly how it is now. Because okay. so the government we have now is also is anti-people. So that's the government of the people, by the people, for the people, against the people. Sir, so, so let, let me ask you, let me take your mind back. Over time, this democracy thing appears not to be working. Mm -hmm. Do you think we shouldn't uh, fashion another alternative? If I had my, if I, if I had my way, this thing we brought from America is not helping us. It's not helping us. It's so expensive. It's so uh, mind-boggling, and we don't, we don't even know how to follow the type of government we have decided to take. We cannot. We, we see. We always copy the wrong things from people. If we can copy exactly the the the, the, the way. The, the manner that those who, said they who established this democracy uh, running it, then we we'll, we we'll get somewhere. But we simply forgot about what democracy is all about and decided to go on with our own democracy or whatever else we can call it. It's no longer democracy because it's not a government of, of the people, only it's government of some people, by some people, <laughs> for some people, and then <laughs> against <laughs> the people. That's exactly what we have to federal. Look at what the, all the promises they made to us. That federal from how many years ago? Eight years back. They change, they change the change mantra. How many of them will we get? Soon now, our man will uh, vacate, will go. How many of those things he promised us have we done? So, so many things, so many, so many things to lament. So many things to lament. So, so before we, I let you go, um, is it not possible to avail your experience to the younger ones? Because sometimes. You talk, you criticize what goes on in broadcasting. I, I have never stopped, whenever I could, to tell people what they should do, how to do things on radio, why and why, how and why. Okay. But some, some are listening. Those who want to listen, listen. Those who don't want to listen, they go, they do it the way they are. But I have had an opportunity to tell one or two people, give them my notes to read, talk to them in the, uh, privately, 
and then write on both Facebook and uh, the social media what broadcasting should be all about, how they should do it, and why they should do it the way they ought to be done. So beyond, that, that, beyond, beyond that, uh, I'm thinking about uh, maybe organizing like a forum. You have veterans, like you mentioned in Nambi, but he's still there. No, 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 Nambi is still available. Uh, <coughs> yeah, yourself and the others. There are so many mm -hmm. of you. These are talents that are just, you know, if I use the word wasting, people should tap into your experience, you know. Yeah. And then uh, maybe you can just say, uh, kind of a training school, maybe meet those people that own this uh, media organization. Oh, you, you, them, you mean we're meeting them for, the, for them to ask us to come and train their people? No, no, as a contribution, suggesting, suggesting to them. No, 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 no. They, they know that they need training. They know where to get the training. If they knock on my door, I will open. But they have, how many of them have knocked? The source of them is even think that if, if they call you to come and uh, teach them what they don't know, it means that they don't know anything, or that uh, uh, you might take over their job. Which job am I taking over now? From who? But if anybody decides to say, Come and tell me how this thing is done. I, I, I won't tell the person one naira. I will just go and tell them how it is done. Even this other e book, writing e book. Mm -hmm. people, if you see what people write as e book, those, even those who speak it, you pity us and the language. I'm prepared to teach people how to write the e book they speak. Because many of them, if you read it, you go and have the Nabu book. Come on, tomorrow when your market is a e book. Then they go and go and go and go and go and go but uh, like um, uh, uh, there's a name they give to some of these uh, parts of speech. You must mm -hmm. know the difference between a preposition, a, a, a conjunction, uh, an adverb, and that all of them mixed up in the, the writing. You won't be able to know preposition and all this. No, 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 it can't, it can't from their writing. But if somebody wants to learn them, we are prepared to teach them without ask, ask, uh, asking them to pay us any one either. After I heard him, I will, when we must have gone, somebody will say, hey, this person, I learned this thing from this person, I learned this person. Like I always said about Tun Nambi Lebra, his work with uh, Harcourt White in those days yeah. made me develop interest in broadcasting. Okay. The work of um, Ambi, uh, Ambi Njoko, mm -hmm. one man Ambi Njoko, who is the Odejo of um, Obo, mm -hmm. his program, his column on Daily Times in the, in the right. 60s, back in the 60s, encouraged me to start the program in a lighter mood. I won't forget those things. Okay. So, uh, why wouldn't I pass on to people what, what I learned from, or what I got from other people that encouraged me to broadcast them? So. Okay, sir, so what is your parting word when we are done with the chat? What are you telling Igbo people, or Igbo, Igbo people in general, and those in government, those who are in government? In fact, I, I, don't have anything, I have nothing to tell government. I don't I will tell the people, mm -hmm. shine your eyes. Open your eyes very, very well. I know the type of people you bring to govern you. If you want uh, good governance, good government, it's the ball is in your court. Thank you so much. We have uh, had it all from our veteran broadcaster. He has uh, dropped a lot of messages here. It is now left for us to work with it. He redefined government based on his experience as government of some people for some people and against the people. Now, he has also offered his services for those who may want to exploit it. Sir, thank you for being part of our program. Thank you very much. Uh, remember, yeah, sir. It's my pleasure. Okay. Remember to like our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube platform. My name again is Afan Thanks so much.